So far in this class, we've talked about how things work, or how to make things work. But the bigger question for us now is, what material do we use to make something work better? Materials are components, substances, or just stuff that we use to make things. The manufacturing industry recognizes over 76,000 different types of materials that we use to create the things that we use every day. Each of those materials has a special property that makes it viable for one particular application. Materials have literally shaped the modern world. Throughout history, when there has been an innovation with a material, it's been significant and it's changed our lives drastically. Even some of our time periods are named for types of materials because of how significant they were to everyday life. Take for instance the Bronze Age or the Stone Age. The Industrial Revolution was also largely fueled by materials. The idea of using coal to generate electricity by making steam was huge. Because there are so many different kinds of materials, we need some terminology in order to best describe them. Our first term is an element. An element is a pure substance. It's made up of one type of atom. We can find elements on the periodic table. They're all organized by their material properties. There are three kinds of elements, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Metals are all on the left side of the periodic table, and they tend to be shiny. They tend to be good conductors of electricity and heat, and they tend to be soft. They're also usually pretty reactive to a lot of different things. Nonmetals live on the right side of the periodic table. They tend to be a gas at room temperature, and they like to either bond with metals or other nonmetals. Metalloids are metal-ish. They have some properties of metals and some properties of nonmetals. For instance, they tend to not be very good conductors of electricity, but they still allow electricity to flow. Compounds are a group of elements that are chemically bound to each other. Some compounds naturally exist in the world around us, and some can be artificially created. A compound can't be broken up mechanically. You can't split it with a knife. Instead, you need to use a chemical reaction in order to split up the grouping. You can split up a mixture, however. A mixture is kind of like a bag of trail mix. It's a grouping of different sorts of materials that can be mechanically separated. Because there are literally 76,000 types of materials, we have different categories for the different kinds of materials that exist in the world around us. Placement of these categories is entirely dependent on a set of criteria. We can determine these criteria through testing. Testing a material for its properties not only tells us what material group it belongs to, but it also gives us an idea for how it could be helpful to us in the creation of new products. So in this class, our next activity together will be to identify a given material of your choosing and determining its function as well as its properties. We will be using a rudimentary set of tests, but it's not very different from what the professionals use. We'll also be categorizing this material in order to determine its other properties that we can't measure in the classroom. If you want your product to be the best, material selection is arguably the most critical step. Choosing the wrong material could be the difference between the best product in the world and the worst product in the world.